Oh my God, we're so bad. We woo, we woo, Swifties. We have an emergency video because Paris has happened. We have so much to chat about. Paris Might One has occurred um, while it is still daytime where I am here in California. And so that is why I am making this video for you guys right after I have finished the live stream because I am crazy. Um, but I know all of you guys are too. And so I am going to kind of run through what we were served in Paris. Um, we were served a hearty meal of new outfits, new songs, new sets. It's just so much. Um, and a few cuts in Paris. So let's just go through what we saw. So we start off with the lover set and we come up in this bright orange and like flamingo pink bodysuit. It is so cute. I am obsessed with it. We have matching orange and pink bedazzled boots and then we pop on another matching blazer just like all of the other fits. I love this fit. Um, I definitely like it more than the previous pink one we had. I like the original, um, the original, the pink and blue one. That's my favorite. I think the purple one with the tassels is cute, but I like the multicoloredness of the original one and I really like the multicoloredness of this one. So our first cut was in the lover era as many people predicted. The archer was indeed cut. It is a big time suck and wasn't even in the era's tour film. So we move swiftly on to the fearless era where we have another new outfit and this one is like a black and white situation, very tortured poets era where she is still sporting her 13 bedazzled guitar and thankfully it's like an actual tassel dress and not one of those weird like tentacle tassel dresses if you know what I mean. From fearless we then move directly into red where we have a new t shirt that says this is not Taylor's version. Very cute. Okay people are being so weird about this shirt and I so these shirts are just supposed to be like cute little like kind of like winky sayings so like not a lot going on at the moment or like a lot going on at the moment um because she wore the shirt that said not a lot going on at the moment and so the one she's wearing now says a lot um who is taylor swift anyway ew is a line in 22 and then this is like it this is not taylor's version ew like i feel like that was supposed to be the vibe it's in the same tone as like all of the other shirts um I don't think it's supposed to be like a statement or anything. I think it's just, it, go, it goes along with all the other ones. No cuts, no changes there, which um, some people did predict. It's very interesting, the things that happened with the cuts. There weren't any cuts from the red era and there weren't any cuts from the 1989 era. From red, we move into Speak Now, where we have a gorgeous, gorgeous new dress that's very hard to get pictures of. Um, but it's not quite as like heavy looking, but I still think it's very pretty. But I'm happy welcoming her into the fold. So I got a better picture of the dress and this is actually my new favorite. Um, the like the detailing and the beading this is so pretty I sat and I stared at this for like a full minute when I first found like a nice picture of it I think this is gorgeous this is officially my new favorite we did unfortunately see a cut in long live which is devastating and upsetting I feel like I feel like that is the tour song I feel like that is the fan song and so it kind of kills me that we wouldn't kind of make a mashup um, out of some songs in Red or 1989 in order to keep that one but I don't know maybe maybe it's special to her maybe it's an incentive for people to see the film I don't know um but it's on it's on streaming like you don't even have to pay for it now I I don't know um but we did cut that from Speak Now and get a nice new outfit rep remains unchanged our singular bodysuit still holding strong same set no changes we love to see her i also kind of love to see it because that's the outfit that i made um for the heiress tour and that's the one i'm going to be wearing to my show in london and so hopefully she will still be wearing it i do love that rap tv hasn't come out yet um and that's the only era that she's performing at the heiress tour that like the taylor's version hasn't come out yet and it's still sitting there smack dab in the middle of the set unchanged, untouched, and I'm obsessed with it. Um, I could not be more obsessed with it and I could not be happier that I picked that outfit um, to 
hitch my wagon to um, last October. Then move into the folklore era, starting with folklore, and we are up on the house in a bright yellow dress, very reminiscent of the formidable yellow surprise songs um, set, but this one is, it's the dress um, basically, but in a bright yellow color. I'm not sure if it's the exact same dress, but it's very similar. It has the um, kind of like cape-like draping um, going off at the sleeves, and she's able to kind of wave it around during August, which spoiler alert is not cut. We start the folklore set with cardigan up on the roof. Um, we do not do the one. The one was cut, which is disappointing, but understandable. Um, it's one of my favorites, and I think I would probably prefer it to cardigan, but I, I understand it makes perfect sense. We then hop down off of the house into Betty, the second trilogy song, and then move over to the piano from Sure Champagne Problems, where we say that we are combining the folklore and evermore eras into a folkmore era. We can call it whatever we want, but really I feel like, like we've been saying that already, um, so that's what we're going to call it. So we have the cabin and the tree hollow kind of up at the same time. We do Champagne Problems, we rise for August, we flip, we, f excuse me, I'm trying to talk about Taylor Swift. So we're rowing around the new bright yellow dress and then we did keep illicit affairs. She's still in there in all of her glory. But then from there, we go into My Tears Ricochet, Marjorie and Willow, and that is it for the folk more set. So we cut Tolerate It and Tis the Damn Season as well as the one and the last great American dynasty, which if it had been up to me. I get that we had to keep one of the piano songs, either Tis the Damn Season or Champagne Problems, so we'd have our little coveted chit chat. I really like The Last Great American Dynasty. I understand why it had to go. I'm willing to let that go. And it's not my right to ask her to let go of Marjorie. It's not my right. And so I won't because I like My Tears Ricochet and I like Willow. I like the staging of both of those. I love Listed Affairs in August and I feel like Cardigan and Betty are part of the folklore trilogy and you kind of if you're gonna do two you kind of have to do all three and then it gets complicated with like okay well then if you take away you only do one what fits into those slots it's just easier to keep it at those three i understand that's where we are but then then you thought things were interesting they're getting more interesting they're only going to continue to get more interesting from here because we pop out from the folk more set with a redesigned <laughs> 1989 and you think you see all these boxes and you think it might be poets because it's giving a little bit of like the, you know, the minimalist, like the box, the square um, from the 1975 um, with all of these like silhouettes of just like cubes and stuff. But no, that was the buildings. That was the buildings of New York City. And we are out in a new 1989 outfit that is pink and blue. And we have a sparkly two piece pink on the top with like a little, I can't tell if it's a tiger or a lion. Um, or a cat in the center. Um, I'll put it on the screen. I'm sure by the time I'm editing this, I'll have figured it out. And then this blue sparkly skirt and I believe two different colored shoes. Yeah, we have one pink shoe, one blue shoe. Um, and we're still insisting on the heeled ankle boots, which is very millennial, but she pulls them off. She pulls them off fine because she is her and she is gorgeous. We have no cuts from the 1989 set. We have the return of the golf club and the car and everything in all its glory. And then when the papers start to fall from the center of the giant screen in a big black road unscrolls itself and like slowly lays itself down like along the catwalk to show a hilly horizon line going like out into like the clouds and like some maybe like mountains in the back um with just a bunch of like old looking doorways and lamps and chairs across this kind of just like slightly hilly vast otherwise empty landscape and it's just this road going into the horizon with the clouds and the horizon line and like the sun breaking through in a very like heavenly way um and just like the scattered doorways and chairs and like some old-fashioned lamps across this like vast emptiness 
and the dancers file out and they walk up the catwalk in like this perfect line in all white, like their patients in a mental asylum, like lining up for their like daily medicine and two like these giant metal structures. This is all happening on the screen. They like creak down from the sky and like land with this big thud and they just look like these old rickety like jail cells and you can hear them like creaking in the wind and like collapsing and settling in to the ground of the backdrop and just creating this old eerie cold abandoned wasteland feeling it looks vaguely like the at their very best um tour set after like an apocalypse with these two like giant jail cells like driven into the ground as if they'd been like flung there after like an explosion of like the building they were in or something and this creaking sound continues and you hear like little flecks of familiar pieces um of vocal tracks like you hear the oh, oh, oh um from my boy breaks his favorite toys and everyone goes crazy and there are like the lights of like bars across the whole scene you know when like light shines through like cell bars and you can see those going across and the the contrast switches back and forth from like black to white and light to dark um and so it's kind of it's kind of creepy and you can see like night kind of coming in in the sky but it's not fully any of it committal um it's it's a little creepy and then she rises up in this corseted cream dress with scroll print on it it's exact it's, it, it's has like a bustier here it's exactly what you think she'd be wearing and it's kind of open in the front and she has these pointy little boots um that we saw her rehearsing in and she says I forgot how the West was won. I forgot if this was ever fun. And she launches into, but daddy, I love him. And she runs and she skips and she points at us when she says you should see your faces and makes like a real show of it. She holds up the one when she says the one and I was nauseated. She hauls ass, she runs with her dress in it. She skips, it's everything that you want that song to be. She skips the second verse and goes straight to what we all know we want to hear her saying where she's telling us something right now and the background goes away and when she's talking about the um judgmental creeps and praying for her she is like there's nothingness on the background and then there are stained glass windows projected down and the stairs come up on either side of her and so there are people in these pews and she's in the center and it's like she's in a church and she's praying and then she rises in the pews the pews kind of stay there, but the stained glass goes away. And so they're just dancing and the numbers going on on the road. And towards the end, when it's happy and they're dancing in the sun, it becomes this like big group like number. And it just kind of looks like the fun, like light wedding dance that you imagine at the end of this song. And then they walk over to what were the church pews and they kind of congregate on one of them. And she sits on one of them and they all sit in their bleachers now. And we do just the last like chorus of So High School, where she does a little wave where she says, you know what you wanted and boy, you got her. Like she waves at the camera, like she's waving at Travi, which is so cute. And then she's back center stage and everything freezes. The bleachers freeze. And it's like the crowd on the bleachers is like pointing and laughing at something. And she's center in the spotlight. And she says, the who's who of who's that? Um, Because of course she does. And this, is I'm not gonna describe this whole number because it it's too much she does the entire song because of course she does because she wrote this song on her own this is like she feels an intense ownership over this song and I love that for her but this is every ounce of the angry rocker Taylor that we saw during reputation that we've been wanting more of with the the black and white mental asylum vibe and the lights flashing and just this crazy female rage like hair flipping is going on it is contagious is all fuck and she is going full throttle like the entire song like i am tired for her after this song the amount of like thrashing she's doing because she's up on this platform and she has this pole that she can hook on to keep her balance but when she comes off of it she keeps her hand on it like she's like chained to this pole and 
it's very cool. It's very much what you picture when you're listening to that song. The effects are incredible. The way they have the live feed of her singing, it's black and white on the big screen and they have it like turning um, and kind of twisting um, and they make her eyes glow at the very end and they kind of fade out. She looks very evil. It's really cool, very horror movie, very like high production. And then I was begging and pleading on my knees for one more even though I was like, she's exhausted. Like that must've been exhausting. Like there's there's no way she needs to sit down and do the surprise songs. And then a spaceship zoomed in and I knew we were about to be down bad. And the beam of the spaceship was a spotlight from the screen, a spotlight shown out from where like the beam from the spaceship was coming and it like caught her in it. And so she was sitting there kind of like crumpled from Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. And she sings down bad on this little metallic box platform and it moves around and makes like a figure eight on the stage while she's sitting on it and like leaves this like star glitter trail behind her. And while the down bad music is kind of winding down, she starts singing, I love you, it's ruining my life. And she rises and we're back on center stage. We're standing and we're starting to go into the entirety of Fortnite, which we do. The um, dancers wheel this like iron bed frame out from the back that looks just like the one in the music video, except for the posts at the foot and the headboard have like the tortured poets department, the TTPD logo on them. We saw it like a little bit in the like rehearsal clips we saw. And she climbs onto that and there's two chairs facing each other with typewriters, just like in the music video. And Poet City is replaced by the incredible Jam, the backup dancer. He is like a superhuman. So he's like floating and doing all these cool things around this bed as like the center, like where the mattress would go and where the chairs are, kind of like tilts um, and turns and does things. And she's just on one end, kind of like connected to this headboard piece and just kind of like singing, having to keep herself in one place while it's all kind of going on around her. It's very hypnotizing. It's very interesting to watch. Go Jan, like 10 out of 10 for Jan on this one um she does this entire song and I thought for sure we were done but then she goes and she puts on this like cream soldier's jacket that matches her dress and she goes into the smallest man who ever lived and she does the first verse and then goes straight to the bridge which she turns into like this war march and the dancers are marching behind her and she's like the front soldier and they're all playing drums and they're marching behind her and then as the song starts to like come to a close and she's doing like the last few like lines you realize the lights kind of flash red a couple times and you realize that she's getting shot like she's being killed and she's dying um so then as she says like the last few words of the song like the really low smallest man who ever lived like she rolls onto her back and she's dead and then it doesn't go black two dancers come over it's like Cam and someone else and they pick her up like under her armpits and grabbing her feet and they drag her over to this red couch that's risen up on the platform of the diamond and they like kind of like weekend it Bernie's her like they like get her to stand up and like try and wake her up and she's like what is going on like I'm not I'm not okay like I've just been shot like what's what's happening and they're like time to change um and she's like oh I don't want to and she throws off this white dress and they hand her this gold one and she's wearing um this like sparkly black two-piece and it's basically like like a 50s like bathing suit cut like high cut briefs um high-waisted and then black sports bra type thing um and they hand her this gold jacket thing and have her put it on they hold her up while they like get her out in this and they put her on these gold strappy sandals and she's just standing there like this miserable barbie doll and then they shove a mic in her hand and they push her forward um, and you realize that the the old timey there's like da -na 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 -na, like very like slapstick like silent film era like brass music playing in the background, and you realize that the tune that's playing is I can hold my breath like it's the um, and you're starting to get what this all is, and as you're getting it, 
and they're pushing her forward with the mic in there in her hand and they're like go sing do do and she's like i don't what what and she's like looking back at them like what and they just like go back um onto the platform and are like no no go um on the screen comes this old timey like film title like very charlie chaplin or like looney tunes title that says i can do it with a broken heart and the song starts and all of the dancers have little canes um and little bow ties and little tails and it's a very like marilyn monroe what like let's be bad um diamonds are a girl's best friend like old timey number and they kind of take it in that way um and it's really clever she makes something totally new and different out of it and has a really good time with it and she hits the line i can hold my breath really hard you can really tell that she wanted to do this song on tour and that she put a lot of effort into figuring out how that was going to happen and that this song is really important to her and she wanted to do it in a fun clever way and and that is the final Tortured Poets song. She had Cam do the um, one, two, three before um, the second chorus. He went, um, blah, blah. Um, it was really cute. And I was like, this has gone for a long time. Like, how are we getting Midnight's? This is crazy. But then she came back out and a new fuchsia pink, just a full dress now because she didn't need to really wrap it around Cavalli 1989 um, beaded sets, which Hello to the Cavalli sets, absolutely gone, replaced by pink and blue, um, replaced by a Trix yogurt outfit with a cat on it. I, I need to look closer at that one. I haven't really seen any good pictures of it, and so I'm going to reserve my judgment, but goodbye to the 1989 Cavalli sets and the wraparound um, surprise song outfits, although this one is kind of sort of the same thing, so I'll be interested to see what she does on night two in Paris tomorrow. Obviously, you guys will be seeing this video, um, and you'll already know what happens. This is just after I'm seeing the first one, and there's no way this is going to go out before night two happens because Paris is so many it feels like Paris is on another timeline than me like they're living in another year they're so far ahead of where I am in California but she came out for the surprise song set and she sang Paris on the guitar and she did love of my life on the piano lol on the piano and crushed my soul like a bug and I loved every second of it we went into the midnight set and I simply don't know how that girl didn't collapse. She didn't have to change this tour at all. <laughs> she didn't even have to have to do a tour this big, but she didn't have to add a whole new high production, high effort era to it. You know, this isn't just some choreography in an outfit. This is like a lot of different transitions and songs. The only thing that I would say, I did feel a little bit rushed just with the little snippets of songs, but I definitely get wanting to incorporate as many as you could to get as many people's favorites in there as possible as well as her favorites and the songs she wanted to do and the ones that she had planned for so overall i am really happy i literally just finished watching the live stream like 10 minutes before i started filming this so i feel like my thoughts are still solidifying but overall i'm happy i feel like we got a lot more <laughs> than i thought we were going to get um none of them were actually no so high school was from the anthology so that one was from the anthology and then the rest were from the original tortured poets department track list and i I'm really surprised we got so high school, but I think the fact that she chose it just really shows she wanted she wanted to put the Travis song in the set. Um and she knew people wanted to hear the Travis song in the set. And so she did. And I love that for her and I love that for the people for whom that's one of their favorite songs. I think it's cute. I think it's fun. It's not one of my very favorites, but I haven't ranked this album yet, so we'll save that for then um it's still i don't know i'm still building my relationship with that song i have a very established relationship with a lot of songs on this record me and so high school have only really hung out once we're still kind of getting to know each other but yeah that is what happened in paris at the eras tour night one LMAO. We also got a new um, Midnight's bodysuit, a new blue Midnight blue bodysuit, um, but nothing else about that set changed, so I forgot to mention it. I have two pieces of Eras Tour merch coming. I broke down and I bought the t-shirt and I bought the blue hoodie because I am officially going to one of the nights in London at Wembley in the fall. I am so freaking excited. I'm going to be wearing my Reputation bodysuit if she doesn't change it before then. Um, by releasing Reputation TV at this point. I'm almost done predicting what this woman is going to do um, because she is just so far ahead of everyone. Like she in her mind right now in terms of planning,
planning, she's got to be at least a year ahead. Like, if this is all done, what is she working on now? Like, I can't even fathom. I can't even begin to fathom. And I need to learn as a Swifty that it's not going to be possible. And so I just need to be there for the clues um, and like try and sniff them out as she drops them best I can. Jesus Christ. Okay. Thank you guys so, so very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed whatever Paris live stream you were able to turn into, or if you were able to go to the show. I don't know why you're watching this video. If you're able to go to the show, you were there, you saw it live. Um, you have footage of this monumentous event of the changing of the costumes and the set list. Let me know how it was if you were so lucky to be there. If you did like this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end, if you liked it, feel free to like it. It makes me so, so very happy and helps me a freak ton on my journey here on the platform. I don't know why I said that. It just came out. We're gonna let it go. Um, subscribe. I don't just chilly Swift videos. I do thrifty, swifty, fashiony, creative, 20 something, figuring your life out, becoming a confident person content. So if that sounds fun to you, feel free, come hang out. I would absolutely love to have you. Thank you once again so much for being here. It absolutely means the world to me from the bottom of my heart. Every little view um, I see and it makes an impact. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Mwah.